Good evening. Good evening, and welcome to Bitches, Bitches in, in the Buckle. Buckle. I am your hostess with the mostest, Judith, or also known as Dragon. And I'm your host with the most, Steven, also known as... Baldy. Steven. <laughs> <laughs> no, Steven has completely shaved his head, and now he looks like he's his own son. Which, we're not going to discuss how that happened, but he looks like his own son, so he regenerated like the doctor. I am like twenty nine all over again. I am I I'm it's like I time jumped and brought my younger self back through time and my older self is back in nineteen ninety seven and my older self said Go, younger self, to the future and be me because I want to live to be a hundred. Sounds like a good year. I just want to die when I'm happy, when it's time to go. A <laughs> hundred seems like an awful lot. But know. nonetheless, how was your week? My week was good. Um, I decided that in honor of No Shave November that I would shave my entire head. And so I did. Um, for those of you who don't know what I look like in person, um, I, ever since my early 20s, my beard has been white, like, like Christmas snow white. And so, because of that, I decided to always keep a clean shaven face. Um, well, hopefully about three months ago, or two and a half, three months ago, I um, woke up late as usual, and um, I ran out the door without shaving that day. And it's been probably a good 15 years since I've shaved my face, and I thought, when I got home that day, I realized that I hadn't shaven, and I thought, huh, I wonder what I would look like with the beard nowadays. I wonder if, for some reason, you know... I had gone back in time again, and my beard had decided to not be white anymore, so I decided to grow it out. And so I grew a goatee, and sure enough, it was... But it gets gruff. Yeah, but it gets gruff, yes, exactly. And I grew out my hair as well, so um, by the time um, I shaved everything off yesterday, um, I had a big afro and a billy goat's gruff. And... Um, I decided probably about a month ago that in honor of No Shave November that I would shave my entire head just because I like to be, um, honorary and... You honor cuss. <laughs> exactly. See, um, I, I feel so and stuff like that, so I shaved it off yesterday. I feel sorry for Chris because in honor of No Shave November, I am refusing to shave my legs <laughs> for the next whole month. <laughs> Women, I think we should follow in suit. If the guys aren't going to shave, neither should we. Well, you know, and one of my friends asked me, so what am I going to what am I going to do for Don't Shave December? And I said, I'm going to grow my pubes out. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds interesting. I'm going to grow a big ass bush. <laughs> you tell me what I look at. <laughs> well, on my next <laughs> subject, <laughs> moving on. A um, bushy November. <laughs> bushy December. At least it'll be warm between the legs. That's all I can say. Exactly. My balls will be nice and toasty and warm. <laughs> Better than dipping them in, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, anyway, point being, uh, in honor of No Shave November, and I, I will fully intend to shave again in December. It's just kind of gross for a girl to do. But, um, for me, this week has been crazy birthday. I'm tired. 
You are. I had a lot of parties this weekend, just for one person. Well, not just for me, but, you know, it just seemed for one person to go from party to party to party. It was just wow. it was taxing. Wow. I'm not as young as I used to be. Wow. Who is nowadays? Except for me. Yeah, you, you who have lost <laughs> 25 years, we envy you. But nonetheless, I will move on and I will carry on. So you, uh, so you had a lot of parties to go to this weekend, or, or this week. Oh, on. very much. Let's see, we went to yours. Uh, yes. Chris, Chris came to yours, and then uh, I joined him later. Uh, went to the party at um, the uh, Bells, Mystical Beginnings, and I got to do a tarot reading there, which was quite fun. I actually did a couple's tarot, and uh, my favorite thing to do is do pe two people together, right. um, which was very elegant. Um, then came to your party, and... Uh, which was awesome! Awesome! <laughs> And stared at the fire until I went home because that's exactly what I needed because my feet, I have, I have to burn my shoes that I had for my, uh, I dressed up as Janis Joplin, uh, went as Janis Joplin for nice. Halloween and pulled it off well because I went up to the, uh, party galaxy person, like, found two pairs of glasses. I said, okay, Janis Joplin or Professor Trelawney because I have the hair for both of them. They're like, oh, totally Janice Joplin. And we have not seen anybody do Janice in such a long time. Okay. Uh, and, you know, with all the Harry Potter fans out there, it's kind of overdone. But nonetheless, it was great. And then we had uh, my birthday on November 1st with my parents where we played Farkle. And I think my, my grandmother won, as she always does, because she cheats. Uh, we've all figured this out, but we let her cheat anyway, because she's, uh, you know, she's your grandmother. You don't, you know, let her go cheat. I call it bullshit and shenanigans on that. I don't let anybody cheat. I don't care how old you are. You do not get a pass because you're old. Just saying. She always cheats. At least, uh, that's the story, and I'm sticking to it. She cheated. Okay. Um, then, uh, Monday, we had, uh, Sunday morning, we had breakfast with his family. Oh, Saturday morning, Chris took me out to breakfast. And guess what I got to hear all morning? Christmas music! And I don't mean, like, a Christmas song here and there, you know, like, between, spaced nicely with between, like, five or six songs. It was I'm Dreaming of a White Christmas, followed by Frosty the Snowman, and then Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and I, I saw Mommy kissing Santa Claus. It was bam, 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 bam. Just like sitting here, really, folks. And I just, I just, I was so upset I just threw my pencil in the hot chocolate that Christopher made me. That was not a bad, bad throw. I'm glad you don't get lead poisoning anymore, folks. Um, but let's just say it was insane because they're not, they should not be playing Christmas music yet. Were they were playing it on, on, on magic? No, they were playing it on their satellite radio over oh. at uh, Golden Corral. And it was just oh, like, okay. take the table, you know, people were like, what would Jesus do? I said, taking this table and flipping it over is not without the realms of possibility here. <laughs> you know, um, you want to ask what Jesus would do? It's that. Nonetheless. So Pretty good Golden party. Golden Corral Saturday morning for breakfast. Golden Corral Saturday morning for breakfast. Too hot for dinner. Which is amazing if you've never been to the Hoo-Hot. Oh, my God. What kind of food do they serve at Hoo-Hot? Uh, Fresh Mongolian. You get to watch Fresh it. Fresh Mongolian. You get to watch it made in front of you. Mm. And all you, can eat. all you can eat. Nice. So we grubbed it up. And then apple pie mm. for my birthday cake. Nice. And so then we had Sawin and uh, breakfast with his parents on Sunday at Panara. And then Sawin party on the... Uh, Sunday, so I've been from party to party to party yeah. from Friday, and so I am just a bit zonkered. Isn't it great that the entire universe celebrates your birthday? I know. Isn't that great? But it's so sad that my birthday represents death. Uh, <laughs> um, no, no. It can, I guess it depends upon... Well, you know, so when is the, the rebirth and death of... Uh, well, well Samhain is, is, is death of the god. It's not death of a god, is it? 
Yeah. Oh. In the Wicked tradition, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's one of them. But I also saw Persephone going into the underground. Oh, and, yes, of course. Yes. And the death of death of life in, on the planet. So, just kind of... But doesn't Persephone go underground at Yule? I think she goes underground at Mavon. That's what Chris said when he did our ritual. Oh, okay. Because it would does. make sense, you know, because the, the world starts dying and... Right. Uh, Demeter is mourning the loss of her child, and we're such bad witches. I I I I will admit it readily. That we need to stop drinking so much. Well, <laughs> that, that's true too. But you know, it, I I I'm I'm a veteran witch, but I'm a bad witch only because witch um witch one hundred and one stuff. I still get screwed up well, on. <laughs> It's oh. like it's like algebra. When you you know eventually you hit higher levels of math, you forget the lower stuff. I'm I'm sitting here working on trigonometry, and my friend comes up with an, a a question for algebra. I'm like sitting here. Okay, about that. You see, I don't know. So a plus b equals q. Well, a plus b <laughs> always equals c. You know, <laughs> because it's the Pythagorean theorem that goes with trigonometry. That was invented by the Trigonomicons. <laughs> <laughs> and they're fighting against the Decepticons. Yes. <laughs> and they're fighting against the Quadronomicons. <laughs> uh, Quadronomicons. <laughs> you shall perish. So with Unite. that. <laughs> Trigonomicon. <laughs> da, 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 da. No, but seriously, it has been a hell of a week. And I have been considered myself very blessed because on Friday my teachers let me off. And today I buttered them up with bringing them cupcakes. So it all worked out in the end for the teachers. You know, they, right got, they got cupcakes. Yeah, and our Samhain ritual was really good. Um, we, uh, the Labyrinth Temple now has a fire pit and it's ours. So Hooray! Fire pit! I love fire. I'm a fire bug. And... Um, we had a nice little ritual in the backyard, um, and um, it was just great. Um, we had probably close to 20 people there um, for the ritual, um, and it, it, it was just fun. Fun, 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 fun. Lots of new faces, lots of, lots of new people um, showing up, and we're going to do it again um, at your time. I've been trying to convince... Um, the priestess, um, my partner at Labyrinth Temple, to build a, um, a, a big, like, like quadruple life-sized paper mache vagina, just like a huge, like, like six foot vagina. And you didn't want to see that every day? Well, I, I <laughs> Wait a second, Stephen, I'm a... You know, like, like, like a huge vagina, right? And it's like you had a penis? No, 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 wait a minute. Um, and like it's red and it's like pulsating and stuff like that. Paper mache vagina. And then on Yule, as part of our Yule ritual, I'll come bursting out of it. Oh my as the god. God! Everybody and then, <laughs> and see, see now that he's gonna do it. Yules, he's not just gonna burst out as a guy. He's gonna <laughs> come back out as a crumpus and find the little naughty kids and eat them. <laughs> or 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 what? I'm just coming up with something that would be awesome. Um, for those of you that don't um um that don't know us in real life, we have this friend. His name is John McEwen. Yes. And he is a lovely teddy bear of a man. He is he, he, he's like six five and He's a teddy bear. And, but he's a teddy bear of a man and Viking. He, Viking and um he he plays Father Christmas, right? Oh wait. How awesome would it be to, to see Fire Father Christmas slay Krumpus? No I no, like no, that no. idea. No, no, no. Oh, okay, no, no, sorry. No. And how awesome would it be to have, like, a red, pulsating, paper mache vagina as, like, big as the doorway, 
and Sean McHugh and Bob Adam. And have on the Christmas pop out of the But you see, we'd have to have Krumpus pop out at the same time because they're twins, you know. I'm not Bob. I, I, I just. I, I just. I, I, I'm giving you a hard time, Stephen. I just think it would be funny. It would to, be hilarious. I mean, because. Let's but face then it. again, John pumping up, popping out of a gigantic vagina. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would probably need to have a vape. <laughs> Followed by intense therapy. <laughs> but, I mean, Santa, let, let's face it, Santa is a Latter-day God. He mm-hmm. sees you when you're sleeping, he knows when you're awake, he knows if you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. He has a list of bad kids. He has a list of good kids. Santa is a god. Right? Well, Am I well, right that, about that? That makes sense, but however, he sends the bad kids to Krumpus, who is his twin, and the Krumpus goes and eats all of the bad kids, saying, you've been naughty. And right. then, then on the 21st, he eats all the bad kids. So we don't have to worry about the bad kids, because Krumpus will eat you if you're naughty. Well, my point is... And yes, I'm saying that to you bad children out there. My point Grumpus is... Will find you. My point is, if we have a Latter-day God popping out of the vagina, that's what Yule is. The God is giving birth to the God. That's what Yule is. So <laughs> why couldn't we have a Latter-day God such as Father Christmas popping out of a big... Red pulsating vagina <laughs> made out of paper mistake. I'm just saying it would cause a lot of people to go into therapy. Which, granted, for me, it would be a guaranteed job position since mm-hmm. I'm considering doing that for a master's. But, you know, therapy is only meant for a temporary time. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, my God, that is so funny. Oh, my God, that is funny. We are, we are going to have to do that. We so. will have to do that once I finally finish my master's in counseling. Well, we're going to have to <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do that in, in the next month and a half and, and figure out how to make a big gigantic vagina. <laughs> a big gigantic paper mistake vagina. <laughs> and this is Stephen Sober, everybody. No, oh yes, yeah, so I did get tipsy. I was just a little bit tipsy. Yes, during he just was feeling no pain. He was feeling no pain, but. It was good that we had it at my house because, of, again... Maybe we should ask the Magic 8-Ball about the big, gigantic vagina and see what the Magic 8-Ball thinks. Magic 8-Ball, should we do a big, gigantic vagina for the Yule? It is certain. Yes! <laughs> Magic 8-Ball, you failed me again! Yes! <laughs> no, but I, I, you know, if the Magic 8-Ball agrees, I must concur. So, I don't know what we're going to do for Yule, but I'm sure that it, it, it'll be awesome. And if we do a uh, giant paper mache vagina and have John jump out of it, that would just. But we make could my no life. longer have people who are under the age of 18 who will be carting you at the door. <laughs> and yes, yes, there will be carting. So, anyway, um, yes, yeah, Samhain this time was wonderful. I was, it was feeling amazing. no pain at one point. Um and um, how about the how about the thing on on the Friday on uh, Sat- su- Sunday, Sunday night? Yes, we should talk about that. Oh that my was gosh, so I was powerful. it was amazing. I was crying. I think you were crying a little bit. Yeah, John was crying. Yeah. Chris, I think was not crying because he's you know he's manlier than the rest of Whatever. us, or so he thinks. But. You know, it it was very powerful, and it set the message perfectly. And it was led by a Catholic. Led by a Catholic. How about that, huh? Yeah. Talk about awesome. Led by one of our allies. Yeah. Um, Dale Weaver. Um, he's one of our allies here in town. And um, it was sort of a Day of the Dead kind of a thing, um, if you follow the Mexican tradition. Mm-hmm. Um, it was. It, it sort of fell along those the lines. Yes. Uh, you know, remembering the dead and stuff like that. And it was basically a candle ceremony. And we had mem- um, remembrance remembrances. Uh, we sat in a circle and we talked about people who um, had affected our lives in a good and positive manner. And um, those people um, that have passed, that I should say. 
and are passing. And, right. and are passing right now um, that have you know affected us in really really good and positive ways, and you know taking the moment, taking time out to remember them in a very special mm -hmm. way. And it was basically a candle ceremony, and we blew out candles, and then we relit candles, and it was just beautiful. It was simple, simple, poignant and directly to the point and um, it's something I, I I think we should definitely do next year. In fact, if we don't, I'm going to steal it and use it in yeah. my own repertoire because it is just that powerful to have. And, and I will say this as well. Um, there has to be a level of trust. Oh, yeah. Um, most of the people that circled with us last night we knew, um, we've circled with before, um, we're friendly with even outside of circle. And so during the course of last night's uh, ritual, um, we felt comfortable enough, you know, to open up to each other and to be really, really vulnerable. I mean, I mean, we probably, we probably cleaned off a, a, a good box of Kleenex, you know, mm -hmm. you, you know, between all of us, just that level of trust, being able to be open and vulnerable around people, and you know, speak from the heart. But it was just a beautiful, beautiful ceremony. Um, if you if you weren't there, you definitely missed out. Oh yeah, and uh, to quote Hades, I've I've got to pull. I don't know why it just kind of comes to mind. Just the comical aspect on it. I heard. Nah, 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 nah. Work for me, baby. Work. Push. Work, phone. I smack you multiple times. Now work. I think I'm going to have to call my friend. Thank you for calling Direct TV. Get in there. All right, <laughs> and off to the news. We have news that's news and news today. News, 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 news. Here we go. And We're... not old news, but new news today, yeah. which is amazingly new news. What? What? There's a song like news. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I might be thinking of the Howard Stone show, but anyway. Yeah, that, I, I think you probably are, but... Uh... It's time. It's time. What? Bitches, bitches in the, in the news. News. Oh, bitches in the news. Okay. We'll because we're going to bitch about the news after we hear it. Because, okay. you know, usually... No, we don't always bitch about the news, but lately right. we have been. But uh, today... Right. Um, today is actually something new. Um, I know for the first four episodes, um, we've been talking about crazy people. And I've just decided... Um, at least for for this episode, I am not talking about crazy people anymore. Um, um, Joe sent me earlier in the week, uh, last week, uh, a article about a guy who decapitated, who de uh, um, here in decapitated. Oklahoma, yeah, here in Oklahoma, up in Stillwater, who decapitated another guy because he was practicing witchcraft, and the guy was a Christian meth head, and he, he said that. Uh, another he, loony. Yeah, so it's another loony, and I refuse to talk about it. If you're curious about it, just Google it. Oklahoma, um, witchcraft decapitation, and it'll bring you right up um, with that. But we're not going to talk about that tonight because no. I'm just done. I'm just done with crazy people. Um, this is an interesting thing um, that I found on, um, you've, of course, you've heard of the magazine Time mm -hmm. Magazine. Um, and this is from their website, uh, Why Witches on TV Spell Trouble in Real Life. And it's by uh, Jennifer Watson. And here's the thing. Um, most, of the, most of the piece was just a fluff piece, you know. She, um, it didn't say anything, you know, new about, uh, about who we are as people or our religion and stuff like that. It mostly talked about... Um, the television phenomenon from, you know, Bewitched to, to mm -hmm. Charm to Witches of East End or Witches of East End and um, it, they even talked about American Horror Story Coven, which was last season's American Horror Story. Um, but what got me 
and what has actually created some kind of a stir on um, online. Um, it's interesting how people will throw in stuff where if you're not paying attention, if you're not aware, they'll just throw in stuff in the middle of an article that you may be skimming, that you may not have caught, um, but other people will catch. And, um, and it's something that has caused quite a stir uh, within um, our community, and I wanted to read, uh, read it, um, and we can discuss it. Um, and it's only two paragraphs long. Um, and again, this is from Time.com, Why Witches on TV Spell Trouble in Real Life, um, by Jennifer Latson. Interest continues to grow, and at an exponential rate, the historian David Hackett Kent Fisher writes in the preface to A Storm of Witchcraft to Salem Trials in the American Experience by historian and archaeologist Emerson Baker. Published this month, Baker's book joins the nearly 2,000 witch-related titles on Amazon's list of books released in the last 90 days. The list includes 23 history books along with almost 600 classified as fantasy and roughly 400 described as paranormal romance. So what's behind today's renewed obsession with witches? Baker, a history professor at Salem State University, argues that it could have its roots in the post 9 11 panic over terrorism and what could be seen as a Salem-like erosion of civil rights in the name of security. Or, more recently, in the revelations that the National Security Agency seems to be spying on ordinary citizens as stealthily as neighbors spied on neighbors in colonial Salem. Um, witches, like terrorists, threaten to wipe out everything you believe in. If they could, they would overthrow your government, overturn your faith, and destroy your society. Baker writes. Oh now, again... This is in the <clears throat> middle of an otherwise, you know, take it or leave it kind of a fluff piece about Halloween and witches and, you know, um, mm -hmm. things like that. But witches like terrorists threaten to wipe out everything you believe in. If they could, they would overthrow your government, overturn your faith, and destroy your society. And that bothers me. Um, if, if we're not paying attention, again, if we're not paying attention to these things, these things can very, very easily slip our consciousness. And it got me a little bit angry. It's like, what? What, what, what is... And, and, and if you go to time.com and, and look up why witches on TV spell trouble in real life um, and read the entire story, um, that sentence there about um, comparing witches to terrorism has nothing to do with anything else. No, it doesn't. And that's that's even worse to compare us to terrorists because right. we are far from, you know, we, we want to pray for peace. We're praying for peace. I'm sorry. Right, right. We're, we're a peace-loving folk like the fairy. And, and, and some of the dragons. But, I mean, it just... It, if, if you're not paying attention, again, I keep on going back to that, but if you're not paying attention, that sentence would, would slip your consciousness, you know? Mm -hmm. And it has absolutely nothing to do with the rest of the article. I encourage you to um, go to time.com. It's created some some sort of brouhaha online. Um, time has, not, has yet to respond um, to the... Um, brouhaha that um, has happened because pagans are up in arm, arms about this. Um, As they should be. Right. Um, time has yet to respond to all of this, but it'll be interesting, and I'll follow this story. Um, it, it'll be interesting to see what, if anything, they have to say about it. So, with that said, let's move on to... Um, a little bit of education, actually, and mm -hmm. remember we were talking about how when, when, you're, when you learn trigonometry, you might forget algebra. Well, um, this is something new to me that um, I didn't know about before. Um, it comes out of New Haven, Connecticut, um, WTNH, uh, News 8, and 
um, it's basically saying that Connecticut um, had the first witch trials. It wasn't Salem. It was actually Connecticut. Um, um, Cynthia Wolf um, Boynton um, wrote Connecticut Witch Trials, the first panic in the New World. Um, um, it was published at the end of September by the History World Press. It uses newspapers, clippings, court records, letter, letters, and diary entries to tell the story of Connecticut's witch hunt, which began almost 50 years before Salem's most infinite, infamous one. Um, and th this comes from actually, um, hmm. um, th this is actually an interview, so I'm kind of jumping around. Um, it's kind of a question and answer kind of an interview. Um, few people know about uh, Connecticut's witch hunt, uh, but it was the most ferocious, actually, that happened in New, uh, in New England. Um, and the reason why few people know about it is because Connecticut's um, witch trials took place in a relatively calm manner over an extended period of time from 1647 and 1697 and followed all the judicial procedures of the, of the day, while Salem's consisted of a wild, intense, and hysterical seven months in 1692, where few judicial processes were followed. Um, in Connecticut, this is interesting, in Connecticut, witchcraft was a crime, like robbery or murder. You committed, you were arrested and tried. Today, the uh, idea seems sensational, but it wasn't, but it wasn't in the 17th century. They believed the devil walked the earth and was as much a threat to the public that needed to be stopped as, say, an uncaught killer is today. Um, Eleven women and men were executed. Um, Hung, or is there any other? Well, um, the first one, um, Alice Young, who's of Windsor, Connecticut, um, was a hanging. Uh, it happened on May 26th, uh, 1647. And mm -hmm. it was the first witchcraft execution to occur in New England and the New World. Um, and again, um, Salem um, happened in 1692 and this happened in 1647. So basically almost 50 years um, um, had passed. Um, most, most of the people that were, were killed were women, but there were also men and a handful of couples um, were accused and a few of them were executed. Um, together. Um, there are no known diaries or first-person accounts from those who witnessed the trials and the majority of court ledgers and other documents from the period no longer exist. The few delicate handwritten court papers and depositions that do remain are housed in archives at the Connecticut State Library, Connecticut Historical Society, and at Brown University's John Hay Library in very fragile condition torn, yellowed, and often incomplete. What's there, however, does provide insightful details. There's also been a few reference books about Connecticut witch trials that were written that were just um, invaluable um, to this author. Um, um, she attended um, several lectures by Connecticut State Historian Walter Woodward and... Who uh, opened Watergate, everybody. That's uh, Woodward is... Pretty uh, potent. Right. And so basically, um, that, that's just a little bit of education. I had no idea. I, I really thought, I, I mean, well, I knew that, you know, yeah. you know yeah. that witchcraft you know, was a crime, you know, mm -hmm. in the new world. Um, of course, I knew that. I did not know that Connecticut um, was, in fact, the first you know, big witch hunt um, yeah. that happened almost 50 years before uh, Salem did. So I encourage you guys um, out there um, to to read up on that because I had absolutely no idea. It's amazing we've we've survived all of this, you know, considering, uh, you know, all the witch hunts and we're still out there. Yeah. You know, it's uh, pretty cool. But nonetheless, m we have... Uh, I just have one more... Um, Do you think there was any burnings at this time? Because, I mean, I know they said that the United States did not have any burnings. Uh, that's one of the few things. The U.S. versus in Britain and England and uh, Europe. Right. We had no witch burnings, but if there's no documentation on this, they could have burned a couple here. They could have. I don't know. Um, I, 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 I don't know 
know, I know that I, I know that in Salem there were um, I that they hung them or yeah yeah I, I I don't think in Salem they actually burned anybody. There was no burning in Salem, but this would be interesting if there were. Yeah. Because. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, it, it's just part of our history. I encourage you that if you're out there um, and don't know about our history, um, look up Connecticut Witch Trials. Um, it, it, it's fascinating. Um, and I just came across this by accident. Um, and I was doing a little bit of research on the news um, earlier this week. Um, and finally, um, I wanted to talk about um, we're not the only bitches in the buckle. Um, in fact, there are many, many, many pagans out there that um, are in the buckle of the United States, um, that are in the Bible Belt of the United States, um, and um, and they're thriving. Um, they're thriving all over. And this actually comes out of um, um, al.com, um, al.com which is out of Alabama. Um, and they, um, this, this was an article um, posted on October 24th. Um, and um, it, it's quite a lengthy article, and I read the entire thing, and it wasn't... I will say this. For as, as much of a fluff piece it was, as, that it was, it was definitely... I would say 99% accurate, which I think is great, you know. A mainstream mm -hmm. newspaper actually gets it 99% right, you know. So um, it's 1%, but still, 99% is pretty darn close. Right. Um, and um, they, they interviewed a lot of um, a, a lot of witches and a lot of pagans um, in Montgomery, Alabama, and in Birmingham, Alabama. Um, and the part that I wanted to read to you guys tonight... Um, um, was the acceptance part, um, because um, it's one of the article, like I said, but um, they talk about um, how how they are accepted in, um, in Alabama, um, deep in the South. Um, and this says, in Alabama, marriage equality isn't as scary as paganism, um, Dark Spain says, Dark Spain as a uh, lesbian woman. Um, I am more readily accepted for being gay than for being a witch. When Dark Spain and her wife Anna go somewhere together in normal clothing, they never receive any hateful remarks. However, if they go out dressed in black or wearing pentagrams, which is the five-pointed star ind indicative of witchcraft, it's a different story. Once when I was dressed like a witch, a woman came up to me at a restaurant and said, I wish I could drag you out in the street and beat you to death. I said, do you not realize how unchristian that sounds? In the past, church scores would stop by Dark Spain's house with pamphlets on Christianity. Once after a week of near daily visits, Dark Spain had her own literature printed, and she basically made up a flyer about paganism, and when they knocked and handed her flyers, she would hand out her flyers, which I thought was really cute. Um, Jessica, 30, a shamanic pagan in Jasper, um, Alabama, who asked that we exclude her name for privacy reasons. And again, it's interesting that even nowadays people um, will say, can you, you know, use um, a pseudonym for my name or leave my last name out of it and uh, in fear of retribution. And, for saying something, yes. Yeah, for fear, for fear of that. Um, Anyway, this Jessica woman um, says that in the Bible Belt, acceptance from family is often the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. um, my dad is a pastor, and you should know this. Um, yes, I know the feeling. That, yeah, my dad is a pastor, and my mom is active in the church. Mm -hmm. When I was 12, I borrowed a book on Wicca from a friend, and my mom burned it. She said, this is of the devil, and you're going to hell. It's taken me 18 years to get through to my parents, saying I respect their religion, but I'm not converting to Christianity. Now I now I hear we'll pray for you, which doesn't sound like much, but it's better than burning my books. Um, um, in Huntsville, Rhiannon, who also had her last name uh, withheld for privacy reasons, I said privacy reasons, but again, it's fear-based, uh, and that's my opinion. 
I, I think mm-hmm. it's fear based and it's legitimate fear based. Um, says that she encountered some prejudices and bullying in high school, including death threats, but eventually got the last laugh. The boy who threatened to kill me came to me later asking if I could do a spell to make his hair stop turning gray, she said. I thought it was funny. Even those who want to crucify you still want your help when it suits them. Over the years, Rihanna says she has, she has met pagans terrified to come out of the broom closet for fear of being judged by family members, friends, or of losing a job. Thankfully, she sees less of that today. I am a witch. I like using that word because I feel like it's reclaiming the word, she says. For so long, people were afraid to say it. So yes, I am a witch, but I am not going to kill your children and eat them. Um, Books, beans, and candles, um, which is... That reminds me of what happened a long time at the Who Haunt. We actually had something like that happen. And I I was inviting the young lady that was our server to um, the Athena Society. I was like, hey, you should come check us out. You know, we're not going to... You know, make you eat a live chicken. Right. Not on your first visit. Love right. that movie. Still in Magnolias. But uh, she said, well, no, I, I would love to come, but my friends say that you you kill and eat babies. And this is in Oklahoma. And I said, no, no, sweetie. The worst thing we do is skip around the woods naked. And she goes, you, you seriously do that? I said, no. There's some, you know, and then secondly, I go, no. We actually serve virgins to dragons. And they go, they exist? I said, what? The dragons are the virgins? Because I believe in the dragons a lot more nowadays. <laughs> and she goes, okay, y'all are all right. I'm going to come. So it was a, uh, yeah. yeah, it does happen. And so, I, I mean, I, and I won't go um, over the rest of this article, um, but it, um, it's al.com, um, al.com, um, it's the October 24th um, edition, um, and of course because it was Halloween, you, you know, that was, that sells copy, and, you know, many, many newspapers around the country and probably around the world were writing about, you know, witchcraft and mm-hmm. things of that nature, but um, it's just interesting, again, that, you know, the first the, the first um, sentence is, in Alabama, marriage equality isn't as scary as paganism. You know, people don't care anymore about marriage equality. But, you know, if you say you're a witch, all of a sudden ah! they're, they're, they're grabbing the pitchforks and torches, you know? Yeah. So um, I guess my point in all of this was to say that um, it's not just in Oklahoma. No, nope. you know it's it, it, it's not just here. Um, it's everywhere. It, it it really is everywhere, and it doesn't necessarily even have to be in the, the Bible South. Belt because um because intolerance is everywhere. So um, but um. For anyway, those, for those who are turning in, if there has been any times that you have felt like you've been uh, intolerated against, that is uh, you know PG at least. Post it below in your comments. Tell us your story. What's going on? Yeah, we would love to hear. We'd from love you. to hear from you. Yeah. I think that's a good idea, you know. Tell us yeah. what's happened. Yeah. That way we can, you know... Commiserate. Commiserate and understand, yeah. you know, share your pain. Right, and not only that, but for the people that are listening, um, and for people who read the comments, it just reaffirms that we're not alone. Exactly, because there's know, a lot of us out there. And that, that for whatever... Um, Whatever trauma that you're going through right now, someone else has experienced that as well. Uh, maybe not, maybe not, you know, exactly specifically yours, but something that is so close to yours that it might as well be yours. So, um, yeah. Um, the last thing that I wanted to talk about before um, I turn it back over to Joe um, is. And, 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 and this will be a little bit of a dialogue between you and me instead of me just reading off um, news stories. Um, I wanted to talk about the commercialization of um, Halloween um, and as much as um, Salem goes. Um, during the Halloween um, season, of course, Salem does big business. And far be it from me to you know, take food out of somebody else's mouth and, um, 
deny someone else a living. But um, in my research um, for the news uh, this week, um, I found a lot of articles um, that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Um, it, there is this guy up in Salem, and I forget his name, but he calls himself a warlock, even though he's a witch. He calls himself a warlock, um, which, by the way, uh, Wicca 101, never call yourself a warlock. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and, and, and he's more of a businessman than anything else. He, um, he, he, does the, he does the witch's ball in Salem. I think he's trying to do a witch's ball down in New Orleans. Um, he's got a lot of different business um, irons in the pot, um, and they all have to do with um, witchcraft and paganism and um, things of that nature. But he he commercializes it and he makes it accessible to people, and he has a lot of detractors. And I'm not trying to detract from him and, you know, start a witch war with him specifically tonight. But I just wanted to talk about um, what you think about, you, you know, the commercialization um, of Halloween. It doesn't really bother me. I mean, come on, look at Christmas. We, I mean, our the Christian people turning in are going to have to face the same thing. When Christmas comes around, I mean, we have the commercialization of Christmas. I mean, what's the difference? And Easter, but it's not. I mean, and Valentine's Day. Well, Valentine's Day isn't exactly a religious holiday. No, it's true, but but I mean, definitely yeah. Christmas and Easter. Easter. Um, but Fourth of July. Again, not a religious. Not holiday. really religious, but still. I, I I guess my point is, I understand a little bit more, and I didn't get it until today. Um, or I should say this week when I was researching um, news articles, I didn't get why the Christ why Christians were so up in arms about taking Christ out of Christmas and, you know, the commercialization of Christmas and, you know, you, you know the quote-unquote true meaning of Christmas, even though Christians, you know, stole the true meaning of Christmas from us, but whatever. Um, I didn't get it. It didn't click for me until this week um, when I was researching news articles, and I just came across article after article, especially up in Salem. And again, far be it from me to take food out of somebody else's mouth. You know, and far be it from me to deny someone else a living, especially in this economy. But it just seems like, it just seems like we're cashing in, if, if, if that makes sense. It, 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 it just seems as if we're cashing in instead of... It, uh, again, the true meaning of Halloween, the true meaning of Samhain, you know, the true meaning of witchcraft, the true meaning of paganism, you know, all of these things, all these truths that I'm putting out there are, of course, in ear quotes, you know, because far be it from me to dictate um, someone else's truth. But it just, I, I, I find, I guess my point is, for the Christians out there that may be listening tonight, um, it finally clicked for me mm -hmm. what exactly you were talking about. Right All I can say is it's a mean one, Mr. Grinch. That's the only thing that can't seem to come to mind, and Mr. Scrooge. Because we're doing the same thing with our holiday. But at the same time, how many people can remember when they were first young? Uh, you hiding in the dark eating chocolate, oh, oh, and oh, oh, me oh. dressing up as a kitchy cat and going to door to door and telling people it was my birthday, even though it really wasn't. I mean, ever since we've been kids, it's been commercialized. And see, for me, I think the commercialization so much not so much for the give me this, the give me that, and the costumes. I mean, credit people could go make out costumes, but handing out the candy to kids. I think to me brings joy because you see people sell, sell the sharing in your holiday. 
Um, and yeah, they might not be exactly respectful, but you can underlyingly smile because they're sharing and telling. Well, and on the flip side of that, um, the argument can be made that um, visibility fosters respect. Mm -hmm. um, and visibility fosters curiosity, you know, for mm -hmm. those that may be searching out um, a different path. And visibility fosters um, understanding and acceptance, you know. And it's the same thing, you know, with, with gay people and with gay rights, you know. Mm -hmm. The more of us that are out of the closet, the more visible we are, the more accepted uh, or at least tolerated, we will become, and that's why it's, gay rights have 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 made such huge leaps um, in recent years, um, mm -hmm. especially with gay marriage and stuff like that. Is because we've become more and more visible. So yes, we're not hiding with, anymore, jerks. We're, right. we're gonna stand out and be who we are, whether you like it or not. Right, and so the argument can be made that with all of this commercialization, with Halloween and mm -hmm. You know, the quote-unquote true meaning of Halloween, the quote-unquote true meaning of Samhain um, may be lost in the shuffle, but the argument can be made that we are becoming more and more visible that way. Do you hold it? The, the true meaning is whether or not you hold it in your heart. And if you forget that true meaning, then it's not up to other people who have made it commercialized. It's on you, not anybody else. It's like the old statement, whether you can or whether you can't, you're probably right. Hmm. Well, the true meaning of Christmas in my heart, all year long. What is, what, 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 oh, what is that from? I don't know. Anyway. It's that one thing. It's like that uh, City Slickers. It's that one thing. What is that one thing? You see, that's the difference. It's different for everybody. Well, Because I... you have so many different pagan beliefs. You have... A lot of pagan beliefs that celebrate the same similar holiday, but each has a different story playing into, like, the Demeter story, or the death of a god, or, you know, um, around, uh, exactly. Right, exactly, or, 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 or harvesting. You or know. harvesting, or yeah. even seeing the dead, and, you know, making right. it too meant for those who have not passed on yet, and so on and so forth. You have a lot of different story, uh, different uh, different beliefs coming into one one uh, one story, and I I think it's it, if we can't all learn to get along, how are we gonna go? You know, like you said, that's more visible. Yeah, I mean, I, I I I get that, but I also get being rubbed the wrong way mm -hmm. about you, you know uh, about the commercialization <laughs> of everything. Bless you, Chris. Thank you. Um. <laughs> he's, two, he's two types of uh, the seven dwarfs. He's both sneezy and grumpy sometimes. Oh, okay. <laughs> he wears a grumpy shirt, so it's a joke. Oh. Um, um, but yeah, I, I guess I get the other side of it as well. And so for you Christians out there um, who I had a little tolerance and um, for, for your co complaints about, you know, keeping Christ's Right, all of that. Um, I get it now. I still have problems with it, but I get more where you're coming from. If you're willing to keep your, you know, hey, tell you what, you guys willing to keep your Christ in Christmas, keep our salmon, 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 salmon. Make you saw, saw and saw. I don't know, something like that. Anyway. Anyway, so um, biggest thing about being seen is getting out and voting. Kind of yes, a good segue onto that. that. You know, yeah. it's a we, and this is important to all, all, all folks out there. Tomorrow is a very important day, and for those who are tuning in, turning in tonight, and will listen, go to YouTube and watch the gubernatorial debates uh, for Oklahoma. It is important that you know who who is running, so you can make an educated decision whether or not you're going to vote for. We really would not like to, like to see it, but uh, Fallon or Joe, and there is an independent running. Uh, so learn your, your learn your folks, learn the stats. It is important that we. I would prefer to see uh, Fallon get out because she's uh, she's locked up some more uh, education funds. 
I'm in college, folks. Money goes to me, you know, I'm having to pay out of pocket eventually, and to have more money come to education is going to increase better teachers for your kids and better quality of learning for kids, folks. We need to have more money coming into education. Um, according to what um, Terry Jones said on uh, Ancient Inventions, $280 billion per year gets spent on our military expansions. And that is more than health care, job searching, and education combined. So even if we were to have, like, Give you give the military two hundred billion dollars. That would give eighty billion dollars to provide for health care and education and job searches for folks in the United States and lunches for the kids, folks. Right. You know, this is something that needs to happen. Right. And we can find better ways to work around it. We just gotta find it's not about lowering the taxes or increasing taxes. It's about what we're doing with the funding that we're getting. And I think that um, it's time for to hand the hands over because Mary had a chance. Mary really did, and I think it's time for her to go. And I'm conservative saying that. Let me go ahead and put that out, folks. I'm a very independent um, runner, so I don't get to vote in the primaries, but I lean towards the more conservative line when it comes to, you know, financial, fiscal, fiscal, uh, fiscal responsibilities, and everything like that, because we need to put money aside. Right. And I'm on the other end of that. I also am a registered independent, so I can't vote in the primaries, but I can vote uh, tomorrow, which um, I will definitely um, exercise that right tomorrow when I go to the polls. Um, and I'm on the opposite end of that spectrum. I happen to be so liberal that that liberals look at me and like, like, damn, kid, slow your roll. So I'm very, very liberal that way. Um, I'm very big on, um, but at the same time, uh, I'm very big on social services, um, expanding social services, and not only expanding social services, but expanding um, education. Um, so while Joe uh, tends to be um, lib uh, uh, moderate, Mo more moderate, moderate. I'd say I'm more strictly. Like, I mean, yeah, fiscal wise, I'm a little conservative. conservative, but everything else. I'm at the same time. I'm the type of person who says we have to find common ground to stand on because we don't have my grandmother says you don't have common ground to stand on. You have less ground to stand on than they've got. Well, and and, and that's I agree with that as well. Um, so even though mm -hmm. Joe is more fiscally conservative than I am, I happen to be very fiscally liberal. I believe that there's enough to go around. Um, but like Joe, I just believe that where we're spending our money, um, we mm -hmm. need to look at where we're spending the money that we already have um, and, you know, how that is affecting us in the long run. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that we already have enough money um, it's just going to the wrong place. People going are to the taking wrong vacations things. where they shouldn't be. Exactly. And I, you know, I, I personally don't mind put, paying people, you know, their salary. They need to save that salary and go on a vacation, not use it out of the uh, the other tax dollars. It's like taking a church fund and having the pastor withdraw it from the uh, plate. You just don't do that stuff. Right. But I have a poem here. I found on 2BP Blogspot, but it's a um, an election day poem, which I think is pro uh, perfect, by uh, Irene Latham. Uh, sift through the promises, replay the interviews. Step inside the booth and forget the scripted speeches and the candy wrap slogans. Weigh each again, each pro and each con. Remember the teeming world and its f people who dream of freedom. So many have deni been denied the right to decide, read the names, imagine a future, and make the best choice in the spaces between breaths. Your voice is heard without a word. And I've had, I don't know if you've had any family who fought in military wars and, um, mm -hmm. and some of them have died. They have died. Women, men, heroes died giving everybody the right to vote. 
you don't get out and vote, what are you doing for the people who passed away? What are you saying to them? Right. And as far as that goes, um, me being a black man living in America, um, you know, so much of my uh, of my history um, is American history. You know, so much of my history of my ancestors fighting for freedoms, um, 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 voting rights, um, and, and that's the other thing. And, and I'm so glad we, we're talking about voting rights uh, or, or going on voting right now. Um, voting rights are slowly but surely being taken yeah. away. And these voting rights that are being taken away are affecting mostly poor people and minorities. Um, it's very, very important to not only watch the debates, um, wherever you are. I mean, we're in Oklahoma, um, and our gubernatorial debate was on, uh, it is on YouTube, so you can watch it if you're here in Oklahoma. And I will provide a link below uh, for those who cannot find it. Right. Um, but also, for people around the country, it's important to know the issues that are happening in your state, in your city, in your community, in your neighborhood. It's important to be an educated voter because voting rights are being taken away. And me as a black person in America, knowing that my ancestors, and by ancestors I mean my parents on backwards, fight, have fought fought so hard for mm -hmm. the rights that, that, that black people have in this country, just just to be equal to um, our white brothers and sisters. You know, we've had dogs turned on us. We've had water hoses turned on us. We have been beaten up at lunch counters. I mean, the civil rights movement was not that long ago. The civil rights movement was... 50 years ago, in the big scheme of things, it's not that far off where we had to fight. And honestly, if you are a black person living in America today, if you are a person of color, let's, let's just put it this way. If you are a woman or a person of color in this country, mm -hmm. if you are anything but a white male. Protestant male in this country and you do not vote, you are spitting in the face of everybody who has fought for that right for you. Mm -hmm. Period. And I, I mean, and we could get into women's rights, abortion rights are being taken away slowly by, but surely as well, you know? I, I, and I, 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 I'm very passionate about, uh, about and this. And see, that's where I, I, I think, you know, in my case, I'm almost being aborted. I think I told anybody who knows my story, there was a lady at the door. She was not holding signs telling people you're a sinner and you're going straight to hell. She was giving people an option that they might not have heard. You know, hey, we, we're accepting adoptions, you know, and we'll pay for everything. You know, not saying, hey, you're, you're a sinner. And if someone decided not to do it, she was like, well, if you need counseling after you're done, let us know. We'll help you out. You know, there's not the, you're an evil person. Right. This is what, you know, there are some consequences to every action. Right. And that person, you know, she was amazing. I don't know what kind of woman she was, but she had to be pretty damn amazing to be doing that. Right. And she was giving, she was women's rights. That's rights right there. You've got to know every decision, every venue before you make your decision. And that goes with voting, folks. Right. Um, as, a, as a woman myself, my grandmother was one of the first women to graduate with a law degree. That was unheard of in Oklahoma. You know, right. she had to keep her head down to be called on and look like she was stupid and didn't know the answer. But when they finally called on her, she brought her head right up and she quoted it verbatim. Which pissed the teacher off, I can tell you, 100%. But, my grandfather fought in World War II. My grandmother lost her first husband in World War II. I'm going to go out and vote to honor them. 
and the honor my the fact that my my fem my females fellow females stood beside everybody else and they're still not being treated as equals. Right. I mean, men get paid more than I do. Right. And again, it, I, and I said this maybe two minutes ago, but I will say it again. If you are anything but a white heterosexual Protestant male, if you are anything but that, and you are not voting tomorrow, you are spitting in the face of everyone that has fought for your right to vote. Not only just to vote, but the rights that we take for granted today, someone's fought for those rights. Mm -hmm. Somewhere. You know, it, it, again, if you are not a white, heterosexual, Protestant male in this country. Even the white Protestant, uh, uh, heterosexual, heterosexual male, Protestant males need to get out and vote because your family fought somewhere for it too. Right. Especially exactly. if you're Irish. Right. Exactly. So, I, I, I guess for me it's more of... I, I, Everybody's... My, yeah, because of your race. And right, and my experience has been different, you know. Everybody's... Yeah. Right. And, right. And, and, you're, and you as a woman, your experience is exactly. really different. It's, we all need to get out and vote tomorrow. Um, take time tonight um, to study. You know, it doesn't take very long, maybe an hour of your time, to actually read what's on the ballot. Um, because it's not just gubernatorial races um, or... Um, um, it, it's city council, it's judges, it's um, school superintendents, it's, and, and not just that, you know, it's not just people fighting, you know, for your vote or, you know, um, trying to get your vote to keep their jobs. There are questions on the ballot as well. Make sure that um, you are educated about those questions, about both sides of those questions, so that when you go to the poll tomorrow and it says, do, um, this is up for vote, do you want to vote A or B on this, and you pick um, your side, you are determining legislation for your, for, for your neighborhood, for your community, for your city, and for your state. Um, so it's not just about people trying to get your vote to keep their job. It's about questions that are on the ballot that can affect other people. Um, so make sure that um, you, um, you're an educated voter, I mean, even for that reason as well. And just so people know, you must have a photo identification, folks. And it doesn't have to be a license. You can actually get a photo ID for nine bucks. Right. And if anybody needs an extra nine dollars to go get a photo ID, bring your free, you know, stuff, and I will give you nine dollars, man. It's really, I mean, at 16, you should be having a driver's license and your permit anyway. You get it from your school, folks. And it, that also works. Now, a document for the proof of ID, the name of the person who was, it was issued to. A photograph of the person whom it was issued, and an expiration date if it's after the date of the election, unless the date, unless the identification is valid indefinitely. Um, the, so you have to have it uh, current, folks. But at the same time, people, are, you know, people are not liking the photo ID. At the same time, I've had my identity stolen at one point. Someone took my social security number and used it somewhere else. There is a fine line. And I know some other pagans who've had the same thing happen. Right. So I vote, let's go ahead and use our fingerprints. They never change unless you rip them off like some weirdos out there. But your fingerprint, if they have fingerprint scanners, they could be able to scan every single one of us in. And we wouldn't have to have an ID. But so many people would be appalled at using that. I mean, saying that's the end of the world. Why are we using our fingerprints? Because they've been there since the beginning of time, folks. Well, and, um, and, and, and that goes back to voters, voter rights. Um, you, you, you know, I tend to be very, very, very liberal. Mm. And it, it, it seems as if um, the conservatives among us um, want to take away 
um, voting rights, um, not because there is any real threat, except for the threat of them losing their jobs. Mm -hmm. um, redistricting, um, making sure that, because when people, re when counties redistrict, um, all of a sudden counties that were red are now blue, or vice versa, counties that were blue are now red. Um, we have to stay on top of this, ladies and gentlemen. It's very, very important, and um, yeah, uh, go out, go out and vote tomorrow. Um, most poll, most polling places close um, here in Oklahoma. I want to say at seven. Mm -hmm. Now here, here's the other facts, just to let everybody know the grand totals of what we have: Republican, Democrat, and Independent in Oklahoma, in the state of Oklahoma. Um, we have 884,150 registered Democrats so versus 881,253 registered Republicans. So, just by that, if every Democrat gets out and votes against Palin, uh, I'm sorry, Fallon, Fallon, Fallon and Palin, they sound an awful little like, don't they? You don't want either one. And we have 257,045 uh, independents. So, come on, guys, let's do the math. Even if 100,000, if it splits down the middle for the independents, Democrat and Republican, Democrats, everybody needs to get out and vote. And I know that there's going to be some Republicans voting against Fallon. Well, and not only that. Um, and, and we're gonna talk, and I'm gonna take this away from local politics and bring mm -hmm. it to um, to national politics. Now, um, people are saying that um, that the makeup of Congress is going to change. Now, um, it, it, as far as you know, Republicans taking control of um, both houses, both Senate um, and the House of, uh, of Representatives. If that happens. The president is a land up president. Um, the president will not get anything of value past these next two years. He'll just he'll just be keeping the seat warm for the next president in 2016. And um, it's very very important that if you want to see anything happen in the next two years to get out there and vote. And I'm not, personally, I would love it if everybody voted for the most liberal person out there. Um, but I'm not going to tell all the people how to vote. You know, if you're mm -hmm. out there, if you're a conservative Republican, get out there and vote regardless because, again, it's up to you as well. And it's your um, right. And, and, it's, and it's your right uh, to do so as well. Um, yes, I would love to see Fallon out. Um, yes, I would love to see our president um, get something useful done in the next two years instead of being a seat warmer for the next president. Um, but if that's not to be, then that's not to be. But that is all dependent upon you and me. Um, so make sure that you get out there and vote. Um, it, it, but I will say this, it is really, really scary, um, the idea of any president um, being a lame duck president. Um, mm -hmm. Even if they're a Republican president, you know, the idea of a president not being able to get anything passed in the next two years, of, or the last two years of their presidency, is disturbing to me. It's sort of like, um, I mean, even if we went back to the days of George W. Bush, and personally, he was not my vote um, for president. But, you know, he was in office for eight years. I cannot take that away from him. But, Excuse me. Bless you. Thank but you. But had he not had... Had he not had a majority, at least in one of the houses, he couldn't have gotten anything of use done the last two years of his presidency. And the same thing goes for um, Barack Obama. Um, it's very, very important um, that we not cut the balls off of our president. And if, um, and if the Republicans take control 
Um, That's then, exactly what's going to happen. Then that is exactly what's going to happen because because there have been some in the Republican Party. I note I said some. There have been some very powerful people in the Republican Party that have made it a point when Barack Obama became president the first time that he was only to be a one-term president. And for I, I hate to choose sides here. I really do because that's not how I usually roll. But for us to say that, for, for us to give control over, uh, for us to give Congress control over to the Republicans would basically mean the president would be sitting in the Oval Office twiddling his thumbs for the next two years. And nothing will get nothing done. Nothing will get done. Nothing. Just because it is our time, and I don't know, maybe you remember this, I have to play the song. So for those of you out there, enjoy. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And I'm sitting you here. Remember this song? I do. <laughs> For those who don't know, the I'm Just a Bill, I recommend listening to it. It'll bring back memories of the schoolhouse rock. Yes. And it's very important to understand that, especially in this time and age, what's going to have to happen. Because even if a, even if it's vetoed, eventually the president can sign it into law, folks. So right. you can either look at it from a too wide perspective, either he's going to do it anyway, or you can work with him and say, hey, listen, you know, I don't like this. Let's tweak this a little bit, sir, and see what we can do. And I'm sure Obama would listen if someone met him head That's on right. and said head, and halfway and said, listen, you know, I don't like I like this, but I don't like this. Can we edit this a little bit? And if he said no. After someone being, you know, hey, listen, I'm, I'm willing to give halfway to you, then you know you have an issue. Right. But I don't think he's that, that stupid. Right. Well, I think that we've kind of... Beat a dead horse. Yeah, we, we, we've, we've beat it to death. Go out there and vote tomorrow. We encourage please, you to do please, so. Please, please, um, please. And, and be an educated voter tomorrow. Um Next week, um, this next week coming up, what do you have going on? I am going to do nothing. I mean, nothing this weekend as far as I know, but I know you have on Wednesday. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. I'm like, what do I have going on this week? Because I was about to say nothing, too. Um, guided meditation class uh, this Wednesday night uh, at 7 o'clock at the Labyrinth Temple at 417 Northwest 25th Street. Um, what is that? Uh, I don't know. I pressed the wrong button. Um, yeah, 417 Northwest 25th Street, the Labyrinth Temple at 7 o'clock. Uh, we'll be having um, our guided meditation class. We've been focusing on one element um, for the last two weeks. Um, we focused on um, water, and last um, the last time we met, we focused on fire. Um, and this time, we're focusing on air. And then two weeks from Wednesday, we'll be focusing on Earth. So um, I encourage you to come out um, and and take part in, in an hour of illumination and education. Um, and meditation um, this week because it will be awesome. Um, and um, it's free. Um, a love offering will be taken at the end of class, yes. Um, but if you can't afford anything, don't worry about it. Twinkies are always accepted. Twinkies are accepted. Um, and we will see you um, in two weeks regardless. Um, it, it's just one of the things that the Labyrinth Simple does um, to give back to the community. Um, and I lead that class. I, um, I, uh, I, I lead the guided meditation class. So it's this Wednesday night, Labyrinth Simple, 417 Northwest 25th Street. 
um, 7 o'clock, Wednesday night, uh, and we hope to see you there. And let me see if there's anything else that is going on for me this week. I'm going through my mental roller decks. I don't think that there's anything else going on for me this week. I do know that I am available for private consultations. Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. For um, anything from meditation to spiritual um, advisement to tarot readings, you can reach me at travelingtarot.com. Um, my email address is traveler at travelingtarot.com. At the bottom of every page at traveler travelingtarot.com is our buttons to all of um, my social media um, presences. I'm all over the place from Facebook to Instagram, to Pinterest, to every place else that you can think of. Um, so by all means, reach out to me um, if you're wanting something privately, one-on-one -on -one, um, with me, and I will be happy to help you out. And I'm the same way. I, uh, I'm i open. Uh, if you need to give me, give me a call, I'm usually at the school, and I always, for those who are students, uh, I do trade. Uh, for coffee, I will do give you a reading. I mean, UCO, UCO students, if you're there and you want to get a tarot reading, let me know. Um, for those who are not UCO students, give me a call at uh, 920-777. That's 920-CARAT. Like carrots, only with a T. And 77, like the lucky number. And uh, I am actually doing a two-for-one special, so if you and your uh, loved one would like to get a two-for-one reading, I am doing special on that this month. Uh, $25 for two people. Nice. Yeah. Nice. That's fun. It's really fun. So I guess that's it, right? With all that being said, we want to go ahead and say thank you for tuning in to Bitches in the Bible, and we hope you have a blessed week. And we'll see you next week. Next week. <laughs>